anyone anywhere can contribute to this and in a world where there's so much apathy and so many problems which feel insurmountable being able to spend five minutes doing something that can genuinely have impact in a humanitarian crisis is just amazing to me. I'm Rebecca Firth and I'm the Director of Community and Partnerships at HOT, the Humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. HOT is creating a free and open map of the world. So you might think this exists already in other systems, um, but actually in low and middle income countries, the map of the world is really bad. There's loads of blank spaces, loads of places that are just not included at all. Um, and at HOT we're working to fill those spaces. Essentially, whilst a map doesn't directly provide aid, it helps you to do that. You know, if someone wants to deliver food or water or vaccines or any kind of medication, they need to know about the route to actually get from where they are to where that place is. Um, and that tends to get really complicated in a disaster. People can contribute to mapping in two ways. If they don't live in the place that needs to be mapped, they can help online. So we have a tool which will surface satellite images of places needing to be mapped. The map might not be made yet, but you can see things like buildings and roads really clearly in the satellite image. So volunteers help kind of turn satellite images into maps through drawing the buildings and roads on top of them. Secondly, people who are living right there in the location that we're mapping can contribute through adding local knowledge. Um, that local knowledge is something you can't see in a satellite image. So things like identifying village names or where the school is or where the hospital is. They'll add that in through doing something as simple as typing a place name on their phone. Up until now, we've helped by creating maps after disasters. Going forward, our Audacious project will map with communities before they're in crisis, engaging one million volunteers to map the one billion most vulnerable people across 94 countries.